Matt Yasa here. Today we'll be looking at the Galileo Thermometer. And I'll start off by pulling out a little bit of glass with my tweezers. This will help me thin out the wall there to pop a little hole so that I can cut the tube in half. A tube of this size can be hard to work by hand. It is the largest one in my shop. I'm trying to blow it out a little thinner. Oh, and it pops on me there. I didn't really mean to do that, but let's slow it down and check out that beautiful glass footage. You'll notice it comes out very quickly out of the tube. It looks almost like one of those pencil balloons, and then it pops. You see the glass just reacts very differently when it's blown out so thin. It's literally going from solid glass to confetti. And you have to be careful to discard the stuff or melt it back in. You don't want to be breathing it in or eating it by accident. And now I'm going to pull out my glass shears and actually cut the molten glass. I'll heat up a section and go in and cut it almost like paper or like a gooey plastic. And you want to cut it outside of the flame as that extreme heat won't be good for the scissors sharp edge. And then I'll go ahead and melt the rest of it apart. Now this uh, device or this thermometer wasn't actually invented by Galileo, but it's based off the concepts of buoyancy, which he uh, was one of the first to observe and document. And this first section will be the tube that's gonna hold the water and the bulbs. Basically, as the temperature outside the tube changes, it'll change the temperature of the liquid which will cause it to expand or contract, which will then make it more or less dense. And glass is naturally more dense than water, so it will sink. However, I can give it buoyancy or lower its density by trapping air inside of it. So overall, it's gonna be less dense. And that will cause it to float or sink depending on how it matches the liquid that it's in. And now as that water expands and becomes less dense in the tube, the air inside those bulbs won't because it's sealed up and kind of trapped inside that glass. And to be honest, I had a lot of fun doing this project. It's one that's right up my alley. I like to make more functional stuff like this and blown out spheres is just one of my more favorite things to do. Now when it comes to glass blowing, I do find at times it can be a uh, relaxing or, th or therapeutic experience. As I'm melting down the glass, I kind of get into the flow of it, kind of get into the uh, rhythm of how gravity is affecting it. It just seems like hours are going by in about 15 or 20 minutes. You can kind of just zone out of your environment and what's going on and just get absorbed into your project and what you're doing. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna start on one of the bulbs here. I'm gonna gather up some of this hollow tube and you'll notice I'm kind of holding it at an angle, the very end of it up towards the ceiling a little bit and that'll help gravity kind of pull that tubing back. I don't wanna to go too fast and close off the tubing. I'm trying to keep that little channel of air going through it. And once it's thickened up enough, I'll give it a few steady puffs to start out the shaping process. It's a little bit thicker at the end there. I'm just gonna go and heat that up and melt it into the rest of the tube and also heat up the base of the tube to melt some additional glass into it. That way I can blow out a larger bulb. So I'm puffing into it and rotating the tube at the same time. If I stop rotating it, it'll start to slump down because of gravity. So I have to constantly rotate I'm gonna heat it up one more time and puff it out again. And every time you heat it up, it contracts those walls down. And as it melts down, it evens out. And so that when you puff it out, you puff out a very even sphere with uh, consistent walls all the way through. And if it isn't even, then those walls will end up cooling at different rates and it'll end up causing stress as they try to contract at different times. 
And now I'm heating up the end of a colored rod and the bulb very, very hot and attaching them together. The colored rod will act as a weight. Now I'm heating up the rod as I'm going down it and pulling it out a little bit. And mainly because this is a reactive color, it has a uh, silver and other kind of metals or coloring agents in it that react to the flame and the oxygen. You'll see it has this purple metallic luster to it now. It's very cool. It does take a lot of practice to get the colors you want out of it. As if you overheat it, then you'll end up graying it out or causing just a, an unwanted effect. And now I'm gonna go ahead and melt off the blow tube from the bulb. I'm going very slow and carefully. I'm going for a teardrop shape, just for uh, aesthetics. And normally you have to be careful when you seal air inside of glass. As the glass and the air will expand and contract at different temperatures, so as you reheat something that has air trapped inside of it, it could cause that air to expand and then cause the entire thing to explode. And then as I melted off the rest of the rod, you'll notice that it's a different color. It's uh, normally an amber red color, but wherever it's been hit by that hot flame, it's turned a purple bluish. And now if you're a new subscriber to the channel, I want to thank you for joining up. Make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment anytime. Now this project was suggested by subscriber Grandma Loves to Scuba. And it's a great suggestion. It's one that's never crossed my mind to do. Uh, I, I have seen one many years ago, but I never thought recently to do one. And I'm going to see if I can send this to her in the mail since she suggested it. If there's something you'd like to see done, leave it in the comment section below. And I'll finish off this last ball by puffing and rotating at the same time. And it helps to wait a few seconds before you puff into it so that heat can radiate through the glass evenly. And here is that reactive rod again. It has that silver in it. You'll see it's a very light yellow. But as it heats up and I pull it out, it changes into a very dark purple. And these colored sections under the bulbs, which are the weights, I'm going to end up cutting them down in order to calibrate the bulb in order for it to sink at just the right temperature. It's a very delicate ratio between how much air you need versus how much glass you need. Now you want it heavy enough to sink, that way you can cut it to adjust it. But if it's too light, then there's not much you can do. You'd have to bring it back into the flame and add more glass. So I'll drop it in. Looks like it needs a snip. Let's see what that does. One more time here. Oh yeah, it's going a lot slower that third time. And that's how you know you're really close. And let's run the experiment. I filled it up with some cold water and I put the bulb on top and set it outside. It's about 85 today, so we'll see what happens. You can see it's slowly sinking down as the temperature of the water rises. That means it's working. We have a uh, successful experiment. So I used my temperature gun on the top and the bottom of the tube. The top of the tube is over 80 degrees while the bottom of the tube is below 70. So the bulb seems like it's sticking somewhere in the middle between that around uh, 73, 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. I had a lot of fun with this experiment. I hope you guys had fun watching it. But that's going to do it for this video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know if you have any science questions. Check out some of these shiny bulbs before you go. And always have a great day.